Hey guys, it's MJ, the student actuary, and this is subject CT2, chapter 7, which is the introduction to accounts. And what I'm hoping to achieve in this talk is just give you a very brief introduction to accounting. And you may have heard of accountants. They are the arch enemies to actuaries um, because they think they know more about finance than we do but they are mistaken. We are the, the dominant profession when it comes to finance. But what accountants are very good at is understanding the accounts. And accounts form almost the backbone of a company. And what they do is, is from accounts that we see financial information in a way that is presented to shareholders or various parties to help them make decisions. So without further ado, let's jump in to what accounts are. And I think the best way to do it is to carry on our example. So our example, we have bought a factory and we're manufacturing shoes. What we decide to do, or what is quite a smart thing to do, is to keep a, an account of all the various financial transactions that are happening. So let's say I buy the factory for 10 million rand. I write that in my journal. Let's say I employ 10 people and I'm uh, paying them 30,000 rand a month each. I list that as an expense. Let's say people buy 100 pairs of shoes every day. I list that as an income. And what I start doing is I start writing down all the financial transactions that my business does. And what is going to be done, it's going to be done on a, well, I'm going to publish, publish these accounts um, each year in order to report back to, to my shareholders. And I want to show them at the end of the day, I think the most important number is how much profit has been made. So what the accounts do is they say, these were the expenditures or the cash flows going out of the business, what was my income, or the cash flows coming into my business. Looking at the two, doing some accounting calculations and adjustments, and I arrive at my profit. Hopefully it's a profit if the income exceeds the expenditure, otherwise it's going to be a loss. And the main users of accounting information are equity investors, loan creditors, employees, and business contacts. Equity investors, they're very interested in this because they want to see this, this shoe factory wants 10 million, but they're not generating any profit. Why should I, why should I invest with them? Or the loan creditors will say, wow, these guys are making a healthy profit every single year. It will be safe for us to lend them money to build another factory because then they'll make even more shoes and they've got quite a good business model going on. Employees, I mean, we've got here that employees use the accounting information. I guess they want to see how secure their job is. If I'm working at a shoe factory and they're making a loss every single year, then I need to start thinking, well, I might need to find another job soon because this factory might close down. And also now with business contacts. If I'm a sports company and I need a whole bunch of shoes made uh, for my sports team and I come across two various companies, each company says they can make the shoes for me, I look at their accounts, the one company, well, they're making a healthy profit, the other one, they're losing money. So... I know that there's less counterparty risk by going with the company that is making a profit. Although I could become a little bit sneaky and say to the company that's losing money, well, I want a discount and you better take it on because I see you don't have any other contracts going on. So I want, I want the shoes almost at cost price, which the company might agree to just to cover its other expenses. So it can get a little bit sneaky sneaky. Another user of the accounts could be, uh, you know, regulators. They want to make sure that the shoes are being made in, you know, the correct way. I mean, look, regulation is probably going to be more, plays a bigger role in, say, insurance and financial industries. But there could be some sort of regulating uh, governing body around the other industries. And... What, um, so what, let's say my company, um, I've got my company and I start needing making the various accounts. What are the various types of accounts that I need to make? Well, the one is the balance sheet. 
So the balance sheet, as the name suggests, it has to balance at the end. And you've got your, your assets, your liability, and your equity. You've then got your profit and loss accounts. This is showing all your various cash flows. And what you're going to find is sometimes it's not possible or it becomes messy if you try putting all the details on these accounts. So sometimes you'll have notes and then you'll have detailed uh, disclosures explaining all that type of stuff. Uh, the chief directors of the business might write a report saying this is uh, this was a tough year for the company, for example. Um, we performed badly because it wasn't good market conditions. However, we've taken um, X, Y, Z actions in order to rectify the situation and we're very confident for the year ahead. So the director might write something of that, um, of that form. And then if it's a public traded company or even some private traded companies get this as well, is they'll get an auditors. Auditors are, are accountants. Um, South Africa, your chartered accountants of South Africa. And they come in and they go through your accounts, they read through your books, and they make sure that you've recorded everything correctly. Because it's quite easy to just say, oh, we bought the factory at this amount instead. Or, oh, we actually sold this amount of shoes when you didn't. And you could crook the books so that it appears like your business is making a profit. Because remember, on the stock exchange, you could have an investor who's in another country or in another town, and he's not seeing your shoe factory every single day. He's relying on this piece of information. And he knows that you have an incentive to crook the books to make it look better than what it is. So he'll feel much more at ease if a third party who's independent comes in and makes sure that the books are performed correctly. And this is where you've got, this is what a lot of accountants do um, for Ernest & Young, PwC, KPMG. What they do is they rent out um, accountants, they go to these big companies, they check the books, they make sure everything's okay, and then they sign off. And when it comes to accounting, I mean, there's, there's different types of doing, there's different ways of doing accounting. So the accountants have got together and they have published certain standards like how are we going to treat um, the sale of an asset, or what do we do when income is received in advance, or all these various things. And this is maybe a little bit of homework for you guys to go and do, is that there are 10 important accounting concepts that you want to get your, your head around. They are money measurements, cost, materiality, consistency, business entity, realization, accruals, dual aspect, prudence, and going concern. So go through those, those 10 concepts, learn their definitions, and yeah, I hope this has been a, a great little introduction to the world of accounting. Stay subscribed as we will be talking about chapter 8 soon.